Hi, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. In this video, I'm going to teach you all about how I manage the crayons. I like my crayons to be highly accessible to students, so I keep them on this bookshelf here underneath my Pennsylvania area where my pencils go in the classroom. And when I'm setting this up at the start of the school year, I would buy a class pack, just the regular color of crayons. And I dump those into these Sterilite bins. They work really well because I've got these little doors that open up for handles. And then students can simply take the lids off and then snap those back closed. I do have similar lids on my markers, so I like to label those with a picture so that things do not get mixed up. Um, I've got two of these per table. I have one of these per table. These are my special crayons. So I just buy the smaller sizes of crayon boxes of the glitter crayons, the metallic crayons, um, construction paper crayons, neon crayons, and I'll put these in the green bins. I'll get these out as an incentive for students. So I might mention that I have these metallic and fun crayons to students while we're giving directions and let them know that the classes that are the best listeners, they get to use these extra special supplies. I also divide up my multicultural color of the world crayons into these smaller containers too so that we can pull these out when we are doing self-portraits and we can find all of those skin tones. You might have noticed that I labeled each one of the containers with what goes inside. This is really important so if they accidentally get dumped out, students and myself will know what goes in that container. I've also labeled the shelf by putting those laminated pictures of crayons up so that if all the crayons are in use and a student is maybe the first one to put things away, they will know that they are in the correct spot. I also like to have some class packs on hand. So specific crayons like the construction paper crayons, if I'm needing students to use that for a project, I'm setting this out on the counter and having students get them directly out of those boxes. You also should be aware that you can order just a single color of crayon. So these are just a refill of all my brown crayons, uh, all my black crayons, things that I might go through quite a few of throughout the school year. If you teach any special needs groups, or younger students, it's nice to have these triangular crayons. So these um, don't roll off the table and they're easy for students to grip. If you do teach younger grades, having some sets of the large chunky crayons in multiple colors also comes in handy. And I would order the white crayons in the chunky size as well as black. Now black I'm using for directed drawings for kindergarten and first grade and white I'm using for crayon resist. This way you have a little bit less breakage when you go to pull out those crayons. When I'm introducing a coloring project with my kindergarten or first grade or maybe even second grade students, I would go through and do a kind of a pre-assessment where we talk about what good coloring looks like and what sloppy coloring looks like. And I have an example of this completed up on the board. This is something uh, pre-printed I got from Teachers Pay Teachers from Fun in Room uh, 428. I'll put a link to that down below in the description. But I would talk with students about what it looks like to color inside the lines. And I'll show an example of what we're not looking for and what we are looking for with that, uh, using colors that make sense. And obviously on some projects that is more important. Uh, on others, it's not so important. Uh, not leaving any white space. So we'd have one colored in solid and one with the white spaces. And then encouraging them to use lots of colors. So five or more colors and then showing um, what that looks like when you color just all one color. This is a good assessment for teachers to use because you can see what students really don't understand this or don't have the fine motor skills at this moment in time um, to do that good coloring. They can't do it and show you too much of a difference. You're gonna see the same thing on your artwork if they're really not able to see it uh, on this worksheet here. With my second and third grade classes, I would introduce um, crayon techniques before I had them color in a project. And the first technique, and I would guide them through this, so I would do one box at a time while students follow along at their seat, is to just use the point of the crayon and see what kind of lines those make and what it looks like when you color, when you're holding the crayon straight up and down. For side of the crayon, I demonstrate what it looks like when you're holding the crayon 
and coloring from that side edge. If you have some naked crayons, you could also show them the crayon rubbing. For end, we'd use that, you know, like eraser side, technically, of the crayon. So you could either have them twist and make little marks like this, or they can slide that around and see what it looks like if you were using the end of the crayon to color in. It kind of makes a more rough texture than the smoother uh, when you're using the point and the side. Uh, stipling is gonna be when students are coloring little polka dots. You can see it's kind of a loud technique. So when I'm doing this, I usually have students grab the color of their choice and then we'll do a countdown. So we'll say for 10 seconds, we're gonna make as many little dots as we can and, and count it down and then you know ring a bell or something as your little stop signal. For twisting, this is just a little goofy one. Either you can have the kids just kind of go like this and twist their hand back and forth see what kind of marks that makes on the paper from kind of turning it like a key. Um, or they could hold the crayon uh, between their hands and they have to kind of brace the paper a little bit with their arm and then twist this back and forth. And it makes marks all over the paper that are kind of fun, but you really don't have a lot of control over those. So they can see what that mark making looks like and then decide if that's a good technique to use on their project. For two colors, this is when I would show them that either they could outline something with one color and color it in with a different color. Or they could actually hold two colors at the same time and see what it would look like if they colored with two at the same time and it sort of blended a little bit there in the middle and overlapped. Um, cross hatching, so this is when you're making like a tic-tac-toe board. They could use another color over top of this to make it look like a plaid or a textured pattern that way. Um, overlapping is going to be when they use two colors. So they're just putting one color down and then seeing what does it look like when you mix another color directly on top of that. And then the last one, engraving, they would need to choose a really dark color and apply a lot of pressure onto the paper. It's also a really fun effect to color with a lighter color underneath and then put that darker color on top. I give my students a paper clip that we um, unbend to scratch this, so I'll demonstrate that for you. For this trick, I typically have the students just bend open a paper clip so they have a little bit of the paper clip to hold on to as a handle, and then they're using the sharp edge to scratch into what they've already done. So it's kind of a scratch art, make your own kind of effect that students could use on their projects.